Hey, everybody. Welcome to Prophetic Lifestyles with Bernard Bolton, where we are making the prophetic practical, bringing the prophetic into everyday life, and we are seeing the future now. The reason why we can see the future now is because the prophetic operates. It reveals the future. And so we see the future through our dreams, our visions, through prophetic words, <clears throat> and through the eyes of the Lord that lives in our spirit, man. So today, I'm, I'm, this is our last uh, video on the series, Hindrances to the Prophetic. And so this is our third video as we're coming to the end of the Hebrew month of, and we're coming to the end of the month of August. I hope you had an incredible month. It's been a fruitful and uh, prosperous month for you. And even if you've been challenged this month, I, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you kept, the, you kept your focus on the Lord, uh, you kept going forward in what he was saying, and that you overcame whatever was coming against you, okay? This was a pretty good month for me. I'm, uh, I'm just thankful to the Lord for every month, every season, and for the people that I've had the privilege of meeting, of uh, people that I work with, uh, people that are uh, important part of my life. And so I am, I'm thankful for the month of Av and the month of August. Okay, so we want to talk about the third prophetic hindrance that I've witnessed in, in the 15 years that I've been walking out the prophetic and been training and mentoring people in the prophetic and hearing the voice of God and uh, also in discerning uh, the heart and the intent of God. And so the third hindrance I want to talk about today is the fear of man, <laughs> the fear of man, okay? Uh, <clears throat> in uh, actually in Proverbs 29, 25, I have my Bible open in the uh, let's see, is that correct? Is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. So, so the fear of the man is a hindrance to the prophetic. And what is the fear of man? Well, the fear of man is you are afraid to operate prophetically because you are afraid of human beings. You are afraid of people in your life. You are afraid of the people that you minister to, the people that you're in community with. And you are you're afraid of their opinions. You are afraid of them rejecting you. And as a result, you don't operate in the prophetic. You never prophesy. Uh, you never share your dreams. You never share your experiences. Uh, when I was at Apostle Patrick's uh, <clears throat> Apostle Patrick's summit weekend uh, last weekend, I was talking with a brother who is a seer, and I'm telling y'all, it is it is uh, this may be the first man seer that I have met. Most seers that I know and that I've met and that I've ministered to have been female, but this particular. Uh, brother is a seer. He sees things in the spirit. And so after one of the sessions that I was teaching, he was sharing with me how, how limited he is in sharing the things that he's seeing in the spirit, because most people uh, do not, you know, they, they don't understand what he's saying. They don't embrace what he's saying. They don't believe what he's saying. Nevertheless, he does not have a fear of man what he has, what he has is a lack of community, a lack of relationships. And, and so I'm, I met both he and his wife, two very powerful prophetic people, and it can be a real challenge. So sometimes it's the fear of man that keeps us. And then sometimes it's a lack of community. And, and as I've been walking out the, my apostolic call, my call, my commission as an apostle and my prophetic call for 15 years, uh, lack of community has been one of my greatest challenges. And so I'm thankful 
that I have mentees who are going after the prophetic and I have people in my life. My mentor, she is very prophetic, one of the most prophetic and act, uh, accurate voices in my life. And I have friends who are like family, sisters who are uh, prophets and prophetic people. And so even though uh, my community has grown, it's still not that large. And so one of the things we want to do here in Prophetic Lifestyles, and we'll be making an announcement, I've been really hesitant to start a community uh, through Patreon because I just, I'm afraid I won't have time to give because I have uh, su such limited time. Like this week, I work six days this week and and today is Saturday, which is Shabbat, and I try to rest during Shabbat, but sometimes I have to work because, you know, then tomorrow is Sunday, and Sunday is one of my chief working days, but still I have to, I have to work. But uh, we, we're getting ready to start a community for prophetic people because this is why we're on YouTube, okay? So fear of man fear of man, being afraid, um, afraid of rejection, being afraid, and the fear of man, uh, the, the, uh, the writer, and most of the, most of the passages in Proverbs was written by Solomon. And so Solomon says, one of the wisest men that ever lived, he says the fear of man brings a snare, okay? So let's talk about the fear of man. Well, first of all, the fear of man is not just <clears throat> being afraid of people. Over time, if you continue in fearing man, over time, that fear becomes a stronghold in your mind. And a stronghold actually becomes a voice of power. It becomes a voice of authority in your mind, all right? And so then once the fear of man becomes a stronghold, it begins to speak in your thoughts. And many times when you're hearing God, because we hear God in our thoughts, God speaks in our mind. He speaks in our spirit, but then God, God, um, let me rephrase that. He speaks in our spirit, but then that word carries through our mind, okay? The mind becomes the vessel of what God is saying, but if your mind has a stronghold of the fear of man, then thoughts, the thoughts of your mind will begin to attack that word or that experience, okay? your thoughts will begin to attack. Uh, many times when you are having an experience, a prophetic experience with the Lord or receiving a prophetic word, sometimes your emotion, your emotion gets stirred up in the negative sense. You get afraid. If I say that, they're gonna say I'm crazy. And even though you're saying that word, you are speaking out of your emotion. They're gonna say that I'm, you know, that I'm a fake, that I'm a false prophet. and or that I'm a fake, or they're gonna call me a fraud, or they're going to reject me. And so then your emotions, all right, begins to feed that fear of man. And then lastly, your decisions, your will, all right, begins to act out from that stronghold, that fear of man. I'm not going, you know, I, I, I know I heard God, but I ain't gonna tell nobody. I know this is the Lord, but I'm not going to share that. I'm not going to release that. I'm, you know, that's controversial, and I'm, I'm not going to speak that. You know, that my family is going to turn on me. My, my husband, my wife is going to call me crazy. Okay, and so that fear of man becomes a stronghold in the mind. Now, here's a second thing. Here's a second thing, which is not really a stronghold of the mind. But many times the fear of man is being fed by demons. I don't talk a lot about demons and, and I don't talk a lot about the devil because I believe that the devil is defeated and he only has power where we give him. And demons only can operate where we give them the door to operate. 
All right. And so as a result, I'm not I'm not feeding that religious uh, mindset that is so focused on the devil and demons They're, they're uh, that's really part of religion because religion always has to have religion has a story. Y'all heard me say that before. It has an antagonist and a protagonist and, and the, the protagonist is Jesus Christ. The antagonist is the devil. <clears throat> I didn't create that story and I don't subscribe to it. All right. Because the story that I'm living is it is all Jesus. Jesus died and and everything was finished when he died, including my victory over the devil, sin, and the world. Doesn't mean I don't sin, and it doesn't mean that I don't have issues in the world, but I have overcome in Jesus. And so I don't, you know, I'm not looking for, I'm not, I don't, I don't preach the devil. I'm not teaching that I'm not looking under every rock for the devil. Every time something happens on the job, it's the devil. All right. I work with, you know, because I know that, you know, I, I work with people and people can be just as messy as the devil. All right. The devil has limitations on him. And so but that's the story of religion. Religion's got to have the protagonist, Jesus, and it's got to have an antagonist, Jesus, uh, the devil. And so many times the church gives more, it gives more attention to the antagonist because that's a better story. And that's what people will be looking for. And so, and so all of the messages, you know, some of these preachers can't even finish. This, and I know this has nothing to do with my, with what I should be saying, but I've got to share as the spirit is leading me. Some preachers, all they preach is the devil. They not up five minutes and they talking about the devil. Uh, most of the popular gospel songs are all about the devil. All right, most people praying. As soon as they start praying, they they go on a war against the devil. All right. But there is an open door to the demonic. All right. That occurs when we are operating in fear. Because fear, even though fear, there is a there's a natural fear, but there's also a soulish fear. And that soulish fear is created by the demonic. And so many times if you're under a fear of man, it is because a door to the demonic has been opened and those demons, they don't, they don't really want you thinking about them. Those spirits, those demon spirits, they don't want you thinking about them. They want your focus to be on man and, and that, that door, they come through that door and they keep holding you in fear. Many of these demons, they operate in religion. And some of us came out of religious churches that didn't believe in the prophetic. And so that's in our mind. There's no such thing as prophets. God don't have no prophets. God doesn't, uh, God's not speaking. God spoke in his word. And that, that sensationist uh, doctrine Although I've watched it, I've watched it decline over the last 20 years. It is still very prevalent in many people. There are many, there are many people doing ministry on YouTube that still believe in success, in the succession uh, doctrine, which says that God stopped speaking when the when revelation was complete. And so what that does is it creates a what it does is it creates an open door to the demonic because you believe in all of that religious mess. Remember all that stuff you was taught that, that you can't prophesy, you can't hear God, and you believe that. And so as a result of believing that, that creates a fear of man. All right. Now, now the second thing, the second thing that um, um the second thing that uh, y'all excuse me, I got a, just got a call. I need to answer it. Uh, and so the second thing I want to talk about is a snare, because all right, the psalm, the uh, not the psalmist, the proverb writer says that 
the fear of man creates a snare. Now, what a snare is, a snare, of course, is a trap. And it's, it's something where you are stuck and you can't get out of. But I want you to look at a snare also as a cycle that cannot be broken. So many of us, we have this fear of man and it becomes a cycle that we can't break out of. It becomes this cycle, it's, 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 it's circular, it moves like a circle. So a snare operates like a season, okay? But it's not, a, it's not positive. And so once you get in this cycle of the fear of man, it's very hard for you to break out on your own. It's hard for you to break out of that of, except by the power of Holy Spirit. This snare also becomes, this is very important here, this snare also becomes an agreement with a lie. And when you agree and believe a lie, and you believe the fear of man, you start to believe in that. And you start to believe what people are going to do to you. All right, that becomes an agreement. You agree with that and there is power in agreement. Now we think of agreement with the Lord. And of course, that's the, that's the agreement we want to operate in, but there is also many of us are agreeing with the lie, okay? that is creating the fear of man. And so whatever you have been taught through religion or through your family or through religious education or something that you heard that you came in agreement with, any lie can become almost as powerful in your life as the truth, all right? And so this is what, a, this is what the fear of man does. And this is what the fear of man looks like. Now, here's your breakthrough, because I want to talk about how to break the fear of man. Okay, how to break the fear of man, because the fear of man, now it, it, now it hinders you in the prophetic. And it can keep you from operating as a prophetic believer, and it can keep you from being a prophet. If, there, if that's a legitimate call on you. And so the breakthrough is whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe from the fear of man, shall be safe, all right? So trusting in the Lord is what breaks the fear, okay? And trusting in the Lord, it, it means to be built up and edified. So one of the reasons why we need prophetic communities, because in the prophetic community, if you're in a prophetic community, you will never be condemned. You will know if you're in the right community, if you're in a community where they're condemning you and judging you, that's the wrong community. But in a community, you're going to be built up and there is a, there's a confidence that's going to be released in you. It's, it's going to allow you to operate freely. Even if you, even if you're making mistakes, it's, Nothing wrong with making mistakes, but what we must, we must be built up, okay? And then as we operate prophetically and we begin to see prophetic words come to pass and we, and we begin to, to, to sense the Holy Spirit using us, okay? Then our baskets will become full, okay? What I mean by full, I mean the blessings of the prophetic. And I'm not just talking about you getting blessed, but I mean, I'm talking about you releasing the blessings and those blessings are creating, those blessings are creating, okay? Those blessings are creating fullness. Those blessings are creating confidence. Those blessings are saying to you, hey, I am prophetic. Yes, I do hear God. Yes, I, you know, I, I sense the, the heart and the intent of God, okay? And then as we trust the Lord, we begin to believe what the Lord is revealing to us, okay? We believe what the Lord is revealing to us, okay? So that's our breakthrough. Trust in the Lord. Don't not, I'm not telling you to trust in your prophetic mentor or trust in me, but trust in the Lord and you will be safe from the fear of man 
and from the snare. Okay, listen, I need y'all to do something for me. Like this video, share it with others, subscribe to the channel. And when you subscribe, I never say this, but but uh, I've got I've got over five thousand subscribers, and most of my subscribers don't don't get they don't watch my video. So I can actually my numbers, the views can increase if my subscribers would just get the notification. So when you subscribe, you need to press that notification bell so that you'll get the notifications when I'm uh, making the videos and uploading the videos, okay? God bless you. I pray that this is a blessing to you. Let's move forward. And hopefully by Monday, we'll have the, uh, the announcement for uh, the Patreon. Uh, which is going to be our community here on YouTube. Shalom, everybody. Shalom.